All right. Well, I'm excited to be here with John Lee Dumas. John, uh, great to have you on the show. JD, JLD here. I am ready to light this stage on fire, brother. I love it. Well, you're kind of known for that, right? You're kind of known for, you know, doing great things, turning things into fire. You've got, uh, you know, everyone knows that you have, well, I, actually, I don't know if everyone knows this. Most people in the industry know that you're one of the original podcasters, right? Uh, and so, you know, it, it'd be interesting to hear kind of the story, some of the beginning stages, maybe when you weren't the big name that you are today. So, I mean, my story just go way back real quick. Starts in Maine, small town boy growing up in a small town, went to college on an army scholarship. So I spent four years as a cadet in college. And then afterwards did eight years as an officer in the army, got out as a captain. I uh, did a little 13 month tour of duty in Iraq as a tank commander. So I was in charge of four tanks and 16 men um, during that tour of duty deployments. Then I got out and I had what I call six years of struggle, brother. I tried law school. I dropped out, hated it. Corporate finance wasn't for me. Real estate, no thank you. This, that, the other thing. Nothing was working for me. And so I started to educate myself, like all these great books behind you. I just started reading and reading and reading from the business grades, biographies, you name it. Started listening to their audio books, started listening to podcasts. And I was loving these podcast episodes that were interviewing successful entrepreneurs. I'm like, I'm learning so much during these interviews. I'm going to go find a show that drops every single day because I need to listen to one of these every day for inspiration, for knowledge, for all that jazz. And... Justin, that show did not exist. It did not exist. I couldn't believe it. It was like waking up and like all of a sudden Starbucks is gone. And you're like, well, wait a second. That, that doesn't exist. Like, really? Or like, there's no Uber? Like what? Like, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. And then I, you know, had a quote by Gandhi I'd read recently that was, be the change you want to see in the world. And I said, why not be the change that I want to see in the world? And I said, I'm going to stink as a host, as a podcaster, as a communicator. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a techie person, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to go all in. I'm going to do a daily show. I'm going to interview people. I'm going to surround myself with the right people. I'm going to build my network up on the average of the five people I spend the most time with. So let's hang out with some pretty cool people like Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk, Pat Flynn, Amy Porterfield, Lewis Howe, some of my first few guests and who have all since become great dear friends of mine now. And it's just like, man, as you and I are talking now, 3,000 episodes, 100 million listens, multiple seven figures. And as a, as a finance guy, you'll appreciate this, of net profit with three virtual assistants. So small team, high net profit, making things happen. Living in Puerto Rico, brother, on the Caribbean, beautiful house, beautiful fiance, beautiful golden doodle who's right behind me right here. And uh, just keeping all the money that I make with the tax benefits of lovely Puerto Rico. I love it. Well, I mean, there's so much we could unpack in this. Uh, you know, I mean, part of the reason for this podcast is to really help people learn how to invest in a way that supports their lifestyle. You've been able to do that through entrepreneurship, through your business, through, you know, a, a medium that was a love for you that you were able to transform. And something that's really cool about you, I love that you publish the stats of revenue and, you know, your, your, you know, your net profit. And obviously you can do the math and figure out the, the cost of the expenses, but it's, it's not much. I mean, uh, you don't I'm have to really do the math, You don't have to do the math. We do the math for you. We show you every single penny that we make every single month. We show you every single penny that we spend every single month, what we spend it on. It's listed. It is invoiced out. It is step-by-step -step, line by line, 89 months in a row now we've had a net profit of over $100,000. And wow. we bring in our lawyer to share a legal tip. We bring on our CPA to share a tax tip, make it a really valuable income report. And that's what I'm most proud of, is the fact that this report can inspire people to emulate what's working for us in our business right now. They can avoid the mistakes that we're making in our business right now. And we can inspire other people to say, hey, there are great ways to generate real revenue by adding real value. And that's what we do. 
And that's the answer, right? It, it's so how do you generate this type of income? And I'll get into specific numbers in a second. But yeah, it's it's all about how much value are you adding? Because you will receive some sort of compensation in proportion to the value that you add. And, and obviously, you're doing wonderful things. Um, you know, I was looking over the financials, your 2020 numbers, you had 2.3 million in gross income, and 1.8 million in net profit. And then let's just take that one step further, because you have since inception on there. So, you know, your time since starting back, uh, you know, uh, I guess it was about just a little bit less than a decade, right? Um, you have a total of 19, a little over 19 million gross revenue, and then 14 million, a little over that net profit. Um, fantastic. So why did you decide to be so transparent with your numbers? Because most people don't do that. They don't list the financials. They don't say, hey, here's what I brought in. Here's what I, you know, uh, here are the expenses. Why did you want to do that? Well, most people aren't keeping much of the money they make. So they don't really have much of an income, income report to share if we're just being honest. And for me, back in 2011, 2012, when I was starting to get into the entrepreneurship game, I found Pat Flynn and he was publishing his income reports and he was doing it for you know many months before that. And I was like, here's a good guy, a family guy. He's delivering real value. I'm getting value from his blog, from his podcast. And he's showing me how he's making money. So I felt like I could, I could do it because he was doing it and he was showing that it could be done in a very value first way ethically driven way. Because, you know, I came from a very traditional background. I mean, I was an officer in the U.S. Army. I mean, it's all about respect and truth and ethos. And I wanted to, to, to have a career that was that. I didn't want to jump into something that was like, you know, a slimy, scammy in, internet marketer, which is like what some people perceived as. And, and Pat kind of broke down those walls for me. And so I said, if I ever get to the point where I'm actually making some revenue, some decent revenue, I want to be that inspiration. I want to be that transparency. I want to be that beacon of light for other people to follow in my footsteps on what's working. And again, what's not working? We make plenty of mistakes and failures. And we and we love we lovingly report those on the income reports as well because we want people to avoid those. And, and we want people to know that, yes, we are human too. Failure is part of the process. It is part of the game. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, you know, let me, first of all, thank you for your service. I think it's tremendous what you and many other people do to serve our country and give us the freedom that we, uh, that we have that a lot of us take for granted. You know, my brother served uh, three tours and was in for seven years. And so I just have a great appreciation for, you know, the men and women that serve us. So thank you there. It's also interesting because um, sometimes you see a tougher transition out of the armed forces and into civilian life or entrepreneurship, you know, and, and it seems like you really transitioned well, but you did now, it strategically. Did terribly. Oh, you did it terribly. Okay. Years of a terrible transition. I mean, I failed at everything. I had PTSD. I dropped out of law school. I was not doing well at all for six years. That is not a short period of time. Mm. So the reality is bad transition, but I was able to pull it together. I was able to, again, look at the books behind JD's head. Like I read the right books. I surrounded myself with the right people. If not like actually in person, because I didn't know anybody with these books, with these YouTube shows I was able to watch, with these podcasts that I could listen to. And finally, at 32 years old, and finally, you know, six years after getting out of the army, I had an idea to start something that I had no idea if it was going to work or not. Luckily, Entrepreneurs on Fire turned into a grand slam. But, you know, I had so many failures before then, and I've had so many failures since then. But, you know, I focused on my winners. That's what I do. That's awesome. And for those of you that don't know, uh, you know, John Lee Dumas is known throughout the world for his podcast. It's award winning. And you've heard the downloads, 100 million downloads. That's so incredible. You know, what I, I think about um, what you've done, I think about how strategic it was, because let's say this business failed. It obviously didn't. You are spending time hanging out with some of the most brilliant people on planet Earth, you are upgrading your peer group, not to say that you're replacing people, but you're being intentional about where you're oh, spending I time. I replace okay? and, and sometimes you have to do that, right? But man, what a great uh, worst case scenario. You learn from a bunch of titans and then, you know, best case scenario, it works out the way that it worked out. That's incredible. Listen, I end every one of my episodes by saying, hey, Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And you've been hanging out with JD and JLD today. So keep up the heat. 
What am I saying by that? You just hung out with two flipping cool people who are both very successful. Here's two multimillionaires you're hanging out with right now. And guess what? It's time for you to keep up the heat now. Go find two, three, four other people who you, you want to become the average of. Like this is your opportunity. This is your life. You're already off on the right foot. Now keep it going. Because I get that maybe your next door neighbor is not the most successful person in the world. Maybe they are. If they are, go hang out with them. If they're not, don't cry for me, Argentina. Go find people online in Clubhouse right now is a fantastic place to go listen and be a fly on the wall where brilliant people are having amazing conversations. YouTube, unbelievable. I sit in my uh, infrared sauna every single day, Justin. And I have an amazing interview that's being played about health, about wellness, about finance, about relationships, about entrepreneurship, about business, you name it. I'm consuming this content and that's happening every single day. It never ends for me. I love it. And you're so intentional about it. I, you know, I really find that people that put intention, they're purposeful, they make decisions ahead of time. It's a, it's a proactive type of thing, not a reactive type of life. And it really steers the ship. Otherwise you just go on autopilot. You just respond. You just put out fires instead of actually moving in the direction that you aspire to go. And I love that. You know, when I think about um, you publicly displaying your financials, you know, that could be a lot of trouble, you know, on an IRS audit or something like that. You're basically saying, hey, take a look at everything. Make sure that I'm doing this the right way. Uh, but you have even uh, just taken the, the, the game of taxes to another level. So uh, <laughs> for many people that don't know the, the perks and benefits, walk us through why Puerto Rico and what that has meant to you from a lifestyle standpoint, because you could live anywhere. And then from a tax standpoint. Listen, I love California. I lived in San Diego for five years. I think it's a beautiful city. I love it. 2014, I wrote a check for seven figures to the government. 2015, I did the exact same thing. I went to my accountant and I said, find me a legal way to get out of doing just that for the third year in a row. Unfortunately, the lifestyle investor wasn't out at that time. <laughs> so, uh, he didn't have any good answers for me. He said, oh, move, <laughs> move to Nevada, move to Texas, move to Florida. I'm like, I don't wanna move to those crappy states. I'm sorry if you're from those states. I don't wanna move there <laughs> to save 7% or 10%. Like everybody's like, oh, I'm moving and I'm saving state taxes. It's like, you're saving state taxes, you're paying federal taxes. That's the big boy, that's the 37, 39%. Like that's the one you want to get out, get out of if you can legally. And I found out about this little thing called Act 60. And I was like, what's Act 60? Well, Puerto Rico, it's beautiful islands in the Caribbean, three and a half million people, 111 miles wide, 40 miles by uh, width, big islands, beautiful islands, poor, just, it's been a brain drain for a long time here. All the best people of Puerto Rico, they go to Miami, go to New York City, you know, that's, that's where the smartest people go because that's, that's where the jobs are. Puerto Rico's like, what can we do? Oh, well, you know, we can attract successful businessmen and women, entrepreneurs to our, to our islands. And guess what? We're an American territory, so no passport needed. Just come on over. And the day you land and switch your business over, which, you know, is a pretty simple process, to a Puerto Rico EIN, you don't pay any federal tax. You don't pay any state tax. You pay a 4% corporate tax. And that's just half of Act 60. So for now, four and a half years I've lived here and I've only been paying four and a half percent tax on my multiple millions of dollars that I'm making every year. So you can do the math in your head. Instead of paying 51%, I'm paying 4%. I bought a $2 million beautiful home on the Caribbean here. 17 months, I had saved more in taxes then I paid for this house. Just think about that for a second. Wow. Amazing, amazing stuff. Think about the philanthropic things. I've written multiple six-figure checks to my favorite charities that, that otherwise would have gone to Uncle Sam, you know, tenfold. It's unbelievable what you can do when you actually start to keep the money you make. And the other half of that Act 60 that I alluded to, 0% capital gains. You want some Bitcoin? Sell it, no capital gains. You own stocks and bonds, sell it, no capital gains. You own real estate, you sell it, no capital gains. You own a business and you sell it, no capital gains, zero percent. That's why all the Bitcoin billionaires moved to Puerto Rico and they're all taking advantage of it. 
I mean, if you're if you're really somewhere, if you're if you're an American citizen and you own any Bitcoin over a hundred thousand dollars, really over five hundred thousand dollars, and you're not living in Puerto Rico right now, you are certifiably insane because it makes zero point zero zero percent chance, unless you have extenuating circumstances that are just forcing you to stay in the state. And there's people, there's people that are in those, that situation. My heart goes out to you. I'm sorry. You can't come to my Caribbean paradise. And it really is a Caribbean paradise. And uh, I have been, uh, as you can tell, I'm passionate about it. And I'm, I'm a pretty good sales guy. So I'm responsible for thousands and thousands of people moving to the islands and keeping the money they make. And you know what? You're only going to spend six months in a day here. Kate and I do a three-month trip around the world every single year. And you know, we spend a month in San Diego and a month in Maine. And then six, seven, eight months in Puerto Rico. Life is tough. So that right there is lifestyle. And I love that. You know, you definitely put on, you know, a, a sales course right there for Puerto Rico. You make, <laughs> uh, I mean, anyone listening is like, gosh, I need to live there. You or do. at least consider it. You know, there's so many advantages. It's unbelievable. So I have a lot of friends that have moved there. Uh, I actually just yesterday, uh, yesterday, uh, ended up investing in a property there. And I've got my eyes on some other properties. And so I'm a big fan, yeah, even just from a real estate standpoint, which is pretty cool. Uh, what'd you say? I said, where specifically in Puerto Rico did you invest? Yeah, yeah right next to the Regis. Oh, it's a beautiful property, same Regis. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, uh, you know, so very excited about it. Uh, I mean, I love Puerto Rico. I, I've had a lot of fun and I've got friends that have figured out how to just be there six months out of the year, even if it's not in one, you know, extended stay just over yeah. time. Right. So this is one thing where you don't want to play the game and try to elude uh, the it authorities. Right. You got to do it legit. Do it right. It's a lot of money. Save it. Dot the I's, cross the T's, life is good. But it's really compelling when you when you lay it out to say, hey, I've got this killer home. It's a $2 million home. And I saved enough in taxes here just you know over the last few years that I've been here to pay for the home. 17 months. That is powerful. $2 million like, home, 17 months, free and clear. So I've got a handful of people in my investors club, uh, my, my mastermind that are um, in the process of converting over, converting their uh, business over and moving. And I've got a private client that is, well, technically two private clients that are considering it, one that is a lot closer than the other. So uh, yeah, it's, it's just its own place. And it is attracting a lot of high profile people, a lot of successful people. So from the standpoint of peer group, network, uh, it, it's tremendous. Where do you live? So I'm in Austin. I'm in uh, oh, one of, this day. One of all those people that moved to Austin. I'm just like, what are you guys doing? I'm like, you're going to Austin, Texas, because I is a Texas is business friendly. I get it, but man, just come to a Caribbean paradise. I mean, enough with these dust bowls. Yeah, there's. Uh, so I love Austin. I think Austin is, a, is just a special, I, special place. You have to pretend like you love it. Everybody has to pretend like they love it. I get it. We can move on. It's good. It's amazing. It's great. By the way, I love Puerto Rico too. There are a lot of places I love. There are very few places I think I would consider living. Um, but, you know, I've talked to my wife about it. My wife's really funny though. She's like, uh, didn't you work hard to be able to make what it is that you make to be able to live the life that you want to live? So what's the point of going somewhere else if you already are living the life that you want to live and you already make what you want to make? And I said, oh, that's a pretty compelling argument. Married a smart one there. I think you should on to her. So, uh, so yeah, we we have fun conversations about that. But I think it's tremendous. It's just so great. It's just just like just like write on a whiteboard the number that you could donate to charity every year if you move to the islands. That that might help her out. A little bit. That could get her. That that could be a good angle and a good strategy. Yeah. And you know, quite frankly, six months there sounds wonderful to me. Six months here, um, six months in Austin. I mean, I'm sure there's six crappy months in Austin you can cut out of your life and uh, spend in Puerto Rico. Well, like you, we love to travel and and you know, I mean, it's been kind of weird with the borders closed down, but we like to spend a couple months, yeah, you know, in you Europe know. or Canada or, you know, just overseas. We, we love getting extended time experiencing the world and then, you know, periodic long trips at other points in time too. So you have any kids yet? pardon, any kids? Yeah. So we, I have a daughter that's eight, just turned eight. Oh, that's a good and age. She, my, my niece is nine. It's a, it's a really cool age. Oh, it's so fun. And I just love ex, like exposing her to this world, this, 
this big wide open world that I didn't know about until I was much older. You know, I didn't really do much traveling until I was in college and, and, you know, most of the college stops were just, you know, more party spots. So, you know, post college <laughs> is really when I started traveling and I, you know, I just think it's so cool if you can, you know, introduce this culture and these ideas to kids at a young age and have them see just a different world. I think that is so neat. And I actually like that from a cultural standpoint of Puerto Rico as well. Very cool. So I'm curious, uh, JLD, what, what is most exciting in your world right now? You've got some big news. You've got some new stuff happening. Uh, and I know that, uh, I mean, we've got a bunch of things in common here because, uh, well, I'll let you get into the specifics, but you got a big project that you've been pouring your heart into uh, for, you know, over a year. Give us the goods. Listen, 2020 was a tough year for a lot of people. Um, I decided to use 2020 for good. And I decided to say, hey, I'm going to sit down every single morning in 2020. And for two hours, the first two hours of, the, of my day, the best two hours of my day, I am going to write. I'm going to write and write and write. And I am going to complete, by the end of the year, my first traditionally published book. And I stuck to it, JD. Didn't miss a day. Wrote 71,000 words. Every word I wrote myself. This is me, zero ghostwriter. I wrote every single word. And it's a culmination of those 3,000 interviews that we've mentioned that I've done over the past eight and a half years of- Which is tremendous on its own. Like who, there, there are so few people that have done 3,000 interviews. That's incredible. I, I agree. I mean, it's, it's, been a, it's been a long time of interviewing a lot of awesome people. And I was able to take those amazing conversations and distill it down into a 17-step roadmap to financial freedom and fulfillment. And I know you're all about financial freedom and you'll probably agree with the fact that it's, it's really hard to like enjoy the financial side of things if you're not also fulfilled. And it's also really hard to be fulfilled if you don't have financial freedom because you're having to you know, probably grind for somebody else and that's not very fulfilling. So this is a 17 step roadmap. Step one to step 17 chronological to financial freedom and fulfillment. It is my life's work. I may never write another book because this is it for me right now. This is everything that I've done becoming you know, a multi-million dollar a year business owner and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire, interviewing 3,000 other successful entrepreneurs about their journeys and how they made it. And I just, I really just saw that so many people are being lied to. Like they're being told that success is, is, is elusive. It's complicated. It's scary. It's, it's like all these different things. And by the way, success and attaining it, it's not easy, but there is a very common path that we all have taken. And by we all, that's myself, that's you, JD. And that's the 3000 guests that I've interviewed on my show. We've all taken a very common path to get to our version of uncommon success. We've all done these very similar things along the way in a very similar order. And this is the roadmap I had to get out there to the world. So when I first sat down in early 2020, I wrote out these steps and they were just the steps. And I was like, now it's time to expound upon each one of these steps. And then I also looked at these 17 steps and I said, of the 3000 people I've interviewed, who best exemplifies each step? And I reached out to them and I asked them to contribute their experience in that step specifically. So a great example is step one in this roadmap is identifying your big idea. Most people never identify their big idea in their life and then they die. That happens. Not anymore, not with this book. You will identify your big idea. I show you, I tell you what it means to identify your big idea, how to do it. I have the templates, the exercises, the strategy. Like you will have your zone of fire. You will have your big idea, period, by the end of chapter one. Then in the second part of chapter one, I tell you how I applied my big idea entrepreneurs on fire. So you can see an actual real world perspective. And then I brought in an amazing entrepreneur. His name is Hal Elrod, the author of the miracle morning. And he talks about how he used his big idea to create greatness. So you can follow his advice as well. And I did that for all 17 chapters. It's such a meaty book. It's 273 pages. It is really a thorough definitive guide to financial freedom and fulfillment. And hey, brother, you're an author. You know pre-orders are 
everything. We've got to push those pre-orders because then when the book goes live, boom, it's out to the world. I mean, I've got your book in my Kindle right now. I told you on the email and it's true. I'm at 34%. I wish I was further along, but the reality is, you know, I'm on a book launch right now. So I'm having a hard time getting a lot of free reading time, but I will be finishing that book for sure. But right now, what I'm doing is I'm getting out there and I'm screaming from the rooftops. I'm saying, this is the time right now today to pre-order my book and to just make sure that you don't wait till the, till the day the book goes live because you, you don't want to procrastinate and order the book now and pre-order is because we have five amazing bonuses that come with every single pre-order. Just one of those bonuses, I won't get into all five today, but just one of them, I'm shipping, JD, all three of my journals, the Freedom, Mastery, and Podcast. Nice. My physical journals, I'm shipping them to your door. Unless if you live in Austin, I won't ship to Austin, Texas, but anywhere <laughs> else. I am shipping all three of these journals to your door for free. So a $17 Kindle or a $28 hardcover order, you're getting $150 worth of real value journal shipped to your door. These journals are all available for 45 bucks on Amazon right now. You can go buy them or you can get them for free just by pre-ordering the book. Uncommon Success book.com. The other four bonuses are listed out there. Um, this book has been personally endorsed, by the way. Seth Godin, Gary Vaynerchuk, Neil Patel, Erica Mandy, Dory Clark, luminaries, luminaries. Read this book. They've endorsed this book. I'm very proud of that. And I'm just excited to get out to the world, my man. You've got a lineup endorsing for you. That is fantastic. And it's it's actually really fun hearing you share your story because 2020 was exactly like that for me too. And morning time is my sweet spot. I mean, I can get up and I can get to work. My brain's fresh. Uh, it's just, it was one of those years where like you, I, I don't know that I ever considered myself an author and you know, who knows what the future holds, but you, it was really fun to have a project to pour into. And once you get into it, it really gets fun and interesting. And, and you learn that you can be more creative than maybe you originally thought, or at least that was my experience. Mine still. I never thought I was going to be an author. Like I was an audio guy. I was a podcaster. I, you know, I've spoken and I've keynoted at some of the biggest stages around the world for the past eight years now. And I love doing all those things, but I'm like, I'm not really an author. I'm going to sit down and like actually write stuff. And man, once you start doing it, it just kind of, like you said, it becomes, you know, part of you and the creative juices start flowing and boom, next thing you know, you're like, man, this isn't half bad. Now, again, I'm not saying I'm going to write another book. I mean, this was my, this was my book. You know, this is my great Gatsby by Scott F. Fitzgerald. But uh, I hear you. I'm with you on that. That's so cool. And, and by the way, I love that you're bringing in people with each of your chapters. So like Hal, you know, Hal's one of my closest friends. He and I hang out very regularly. His podcast is actually released like right now, like today. Um, and and uh, we've got uh, some UFC plans here in two days. Uh, so, you know, it, Hal. he is just a ball of joy and yeah. energy and inspiration. And, uh, you know, it, it's great that you're pulling people in like that to yeah, help. Got Pat you know, Flynn, share you know, what you're doing. One of the guys who originally inspired me, Pat Flynn, he's the feature. I've got Amy Porterfield, Jeff Walker talking about launches, Russell Brunson, Ramit Sethi. I mean, I went creme de la creme. I called in all my favors, all my reciprocity, and boom, it is now. I am going all in, and uh, man, I'm excited about this. Well, and I feel like this is such a great time to, to give our book launch director some killer props because we share the same book launch director, Amber Vilhauer with NGNG Enterprises. And no guts, no glory. She is a beast. She is like the hardest worker out there. She puts her clients first. It, I am like more than impressed with her, with her work ethic, with her team, with their expertise. Like she leaves no detail behind. Uh, I'm just thrilled. And I'm, I'm curious. I, I mean, I know you've had the same experience, but you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts too. Yeah. Amber and I go way back. Uh, we used to hang out in San Diego back in the day. And she actually last year, um, uh, actually it was, it was late 2019. So we snuck it in before things got crazy. Um, she hosted an amazing mastermind at my home here in Puerto Rico. So, you know, we brought down Michael McCallowitz, Sally Hogshead, Michael Port, um, just, epic, epic individuals. And we had a three-day in-person mastermind here at my place. And it was just such a cool experience. Um, 
you know, you must know John, John Berghoff as well. Oh, yeah. Very he well. He ran the mastermind for all three days here and just getting to hang out with John is obviously like, you know, he's so similar to Hal as far as their energy and their vibe. It was so awesome. And it was just such a great, fantastic experience. I mean, I loved every minute of it. And, you know, Amber, you know, she's just great at what she does for obvious reasons. And uh, when it came time for me to get a book launch manager and go all in, gave Amber a call, locked it down. I love it. And you know what, John Berghoff, what, uh, I mean, a great facilitator, the world's greatest facilitator. This guy's like facilitating for the, you know, biggest names in the world uh, for their corporate teams and their executives. It's, it's pretty awesome. And it's Excellent. nice that you can have him on a personal basis in your home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's next level. He is. That is so cool. So what do you, what's the purpose of the book in like the long term? Why, why write a book? You weren't planning on writing a book. You want to have impact. It's clear, but um, why now? So my podcast gets 1.4 million listens month over month and growing. And it's an audience that I lovingly refer to as Fire Nation. They're amazing. Um, and one thing they have in common is that they're really looking to, to, grow an online business, to start an online business, to, to get going in this world that we live in. And so I get the same questions over and over again. And like, you know, I can't sit down and write out an answer to every one of these questions, but now I have the definitive answer to all of their questions. I can hand them a $17 book and say, if you can't read this book and apply the principles, the 17 step roadmap and have some uncommon success in your life in the next six months, then that tells you something too, which is a good thing. It tells you that this is just not for you, which is fine. It's better to know now than later. And that's what I think a lot of people need to know. Like this is a book that if entrepreneurship is meant for you, if you know starting and launching and growing something of your own is for you, this book will get will get you there a hundred percent. Follow the 17 steps. It's going to take you there step by step by step done, end of story, period. You will be experiencing your own uncommon success. For the small percentage of people, and there will be people out there who just, it's just, John, it's not working for me. It's not going to happen for you. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm an army officer. I, I, I can be blunt at times. I'm just saying it's just not going to work for you. And that's not, that's not a bad thing. JD, the 37th employee at Facebook, much richer than you and I will ever be. <laughs> that's that true. Person, flipping, crushing it. And they're, they found their thing. And so if this isn't your thing, go find your thing, go be the 37th employee at the next Facebook or whatever, or the number two at an amazing company or whatever it looks like. And that's okay too. But the best part about it is this book will show you if you can't hack it after this, man, hang it up and it's fine. Go find something else. Cause there's something else waiting for you for sure. That's great. And it's just good to have like a, 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 an actual finite decision. Like, a, you know, it's, it, this is binary. It's yes or it's no. And all right, let's move on to the next thing. It's good to not be in limbo and to be able to make a decision and move forward. You know, one of the things that I love asking all of my guests, and it's so funny because it ties in perfectly with you, the lifestyle you have, the book that you wrote. Um, but I love asking people what wealth and freedom mean to them. So to you, what are wealth and freedom? They're honestly one and the same. They really are to me because freedom means waking up in the morning and doing what I want, where I want, with whom I want. And when I can do those things, that's because I'm financially free. It's because I have lifestyle freedom. It's because I have that location independence. I have those things. And that to me is wealth and freedom. And so those are things that I've strived for and things that things luckily that long ago I achieved and I'm living that life now. And now what lights me up inside is not to go sit by my beautiful pool or go on to my beautiful beach and sit Mai Tais. It's not how I operate. Like, do I love going for long walks with my dog and my fiance? Yes. Do I enjoy my pool and my terrace and my beach? Yes. All of those things. But, you know, there's a limit to how much I'm going to enjoy that stuff because I want to get on a microphone. I want to talk to you. You're an inspiring guy. You're doing great things. I love having conversations like this. I want to talk to Hal Elrod, who I just talked to 35 minutes ago, had a, interviewed him for my show. 
want to talk to John Berghoff at my house. John Berghoff's not coming to my house if I'm just retired sitting on the beach. He's got no use for me and I've got no use for him. I don't want to live in that world. I want to live in that world where I'm surrounding myself and I'm having these conversations. And by the way, I'm doing the ripple effects, which is this conversation, somebody's listening and someone's saying, and that JLD, it's not vibing with them. Cool. I'm, not everybody's going to vibe with me. That is totally cool. Go find your vibe. Obviously, if you're listening, you probably vibe with JD. Awesome. Keep consuming his content. There's going to be people that listen right now. They're like, you know what? I kind of had to hear what John was saying. And I'm going to go read that book and I'm going to listen to his podcast. And they're going to be inspired to do something that they might otherwise not have done. And that person, JD, that ins it does something they might not otherwise have done is now going to go and inspire a whole other set of people who might not otherwise have been inspired without that ripple effect, without that second, third, fourth, fifth degree of separation. That's the ripple effect. That's what lights me up inside. And I know that people like myself, Hal Elrod, John Berghoff, you, like we're making this world a better place, one inspiration at a time. JLD, I love your passion, your enthusiasm. It is contagious. And, you know, one thing that I think about when you say, hey, you know, I'm not just going to sit on the beach and sip my ties. It's, it's fun to do that for a period of time. What's even more fun is to know that you could do that indefinitely, but not do it. But it's <laughs> having that time where you then can say, okay, well, I don't have to work. So what do I get to work on? What can I create? Who can I spend time with? And that's the fun of it. That's the purpose of financial independence and financial freedom. It's to buy your time back so you can spend it as you want, pour into the passions that, you know, reside in the depths of your soul and, you know, do, do whatever it is that you want to do, accomplish a new thing, write a book, even though you've never written a book and, you know, move to a place that you've never been and, you know, try all kinds of new things. And I just love what you're doing and the impact that you are making. I have a, an interesting question because you have a great, you know, peer group, you have great advisors, you have great um, mentors. I mean, you, you really have done a great job of curating just an epic um, group of people to surround yourself with. So my question is, with all these great people around you, what have you listened to recently or read recently that has been really inspiring? I love reading fiction books because to me, it's kind of one of those like outside of the box things. Like, Will I listen to business podcasts all day long? Will I read business books? Of course, I'm reading Lifestyle Entrepreneur right now. It's one of the books I'm reading. Like, will I read books like that? Yes. But I at the same time love reading like not like fiction books that are just, you know, for fun, entertainment, kind of gives my, my brain a chance to unwind, turn off and like not be so focused. And then sometimes click, something happens during that time. And I have an idea that I never would have had always being in business mode, always doing that thing. And so, man, there's a book. Uh, there's actually two of them now because the second one came out, but the first one was called Ready Player One. Oh yeah. And if you were born anytime, like in 1980 or later, like, well, and earlier too, actually, I guess, let me rephrase that. If you were born in any time, like, before 1990, this book is classic for you. And then there's a, a book that just came out. I don't know if you've seen this yet, JD, but I obviously signed up to this guy's email list. So I knew it. Ready Player Two, it is out yep. <laughs> and it is good. It's not as good as Ready Player One, but it's really good. And those books, man, I was just in a blissful place reading that book by my pool, looking at the Caribbean, like life was good. It's great when you can find a book that you don't put down that you are so eager to read that like this trumps most things. And I love it. And you said um, something about how really your brain works a different way. You, you have different ideas because you're not obsessing in the thing, you know, right? You, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're kind of outside your business, outside your ideas rather than inside of them. And so, you know, there, there's something called, you know, the, the different brain waves and one of them being theta where your brain kind of disconnects and, and that's where a lot of the creative thoughts tend to happen. And so like, if you've ever had that experience in the shower where you're like, oh, you know, I have these killer ideas in the shower frequently. I, I right? bought 
Amazon, a little dry erase board to put in the shower that was like waterproof because like I was tired of like coming up with an idea and then having to like repeat it to myself a million times before I got, I'm like, I want to enjoy my showers. My shower is like my favorite part of the day. So I'm just like, got the little dry erase board in there writing my ideas down. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. That's a nugget in itself because I do, I do the thing. I'm like, okay, repeat it, repeat it. This is good. And then you get out of theta, right? Uh, you know, and another, so, great, another great little hack is I do have an Alexa in my um, office, uh, sorry, in my, in my bathroom. And so I will just like be like, Alexa, take this note and then I'll say it. And then like, it'll go to my notes. So, so that's pretty cool too. Oh, I love it. Well, reading does the same to me. I mean, I get into another brave brain wavelength and I get all the creative juices going. My ideas tend to come when I can get outside, like get the brain to stop thinking about whatever it is and just let it roam, let it imagine, let it get creative. That's where the magic is. Well, JLD, I have had so much fun having you on the show. I know you've got a tight schedule and I appreciate you making the time, especially during a busy book launch. I literally just got done. So I empathize so much with you, where you are, the, you know, the, the hoops that you need to jump through to make sure that you're doing everything that you can for you know, the, the success of the book. And I just want to, again, uh, give you a chance to share where our listeners can find out about you and where they can get the book. Uncommonsuccessbook.com. There's a great video there. tells you more about the book. Obviously, below on that website, there's some great description of the books. All five of the bonuses are detailed out there. And again, these bonuses, they disappear the day the book goes live on March 23rd. So do not wait because you'll get zero bonuses if you wait. You'll get five bonuses if you act now. And we're actually pulling bonuses before launch day. So um, definitely the sooner the better for everybody listening. Uncommonsuccessbook.com. One of those bonuses, I am shipping all three of my journals to your door. To your door. And I was kidding. I will ship to Austin, but just not. To <laughs> I was hoping I was banking on it. <laughs> I was banking on it, baby. Well, but I, uh, I'm super passionate about this book. I mean, I, I put my heart, my soul, everything, my blood, sweat, my tears of the past eight and a half years, 3000 episodes, everything that I've learned is in this book. And if you don't think that's worth $17, I hate you. No, I'm just kidding. I still love you. <laughs> well, I'm inspired to read your book because it's on topics that are meaningful to me. And it's, you know, a system where I have also built my wealth, right? I, I can, I, I recognize that it sounds, um, it, it's uh, methodical and I like that. Um, but also if you're reading my book, I have to read your book. So no matter what, you know, by, you know, it's a, a reciprocal, uh, type of commandment there. So, uh, but Hey, I am so thrilled to have you on the show and, and, uh, to really learn more about you and what you've been spending time on this past year. You are an incredible guy with a brilliant vision. And I'm just so excited that you were able to share it with the world. And to all of our listeners, I just want to encourage you to take a step move in the direction of financial freedom, move one step closer, take one form of action to live a life by design, not by default, so that your wildest dreams can come true. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you on next episode.